What's up, everyone? Oh, this is going to be fun. Oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to play some guitar today. Um, I'm going to talk about one of my biggest videos ever, which is my Stairway to, to Heaven in a Parallel Universe. used to have a different title, but I changed it, like I do sometimes, um, which is really, honestly, my favorite video I think I've ever made. And it's with uh, Phil X uh, doing his Eddie Van Halen impersonation and Eric Johnson. This was a, this was a, I tried to do another video, but nobody watched it. I did an AD, ACDC back in black remake. And for some reason, it's just, it's like no one has ever seen it. And I think it's incredibly good. It's with Phil and with uh, Bumblefoot, with Ron and, and it's killer. Great video. Uh, but I want to talk about kind of what is behind it and how I came up with a solo and how, how I developed an idea that, that uh, uh, to, you know, to, to, fight with the Jimmy Page solo that is so ingrained in my brain. This is this is one of the hardest things to do is to play a solo over over a song that you've heard a million times and it's such a classic important solo. Uh but first of all, I like I have a couple announcements of some live shows. I announced last week on my uh live stream about two new dates that were added. One was uh <clears throat> in Atlanta here on September 28th. Well, the first one is in Sweden. For those of you in Sweden, I'll be at the Sodra Theater uh, on July 22nd. Still a few tickets left in Stockholm. Oh, I can't wait. I've never been to Sweden. Uh, July 22nd, Sodra Teatrin, Teatrin Theater, I guess. Um, then at in Atlanta, here in my hometown, my first show ever since I started YouTube. Real, it's my first show I've done since uh, my band Billionaire played in 2000. So really first show in 20 years at the Variety Playhouse on September 28th. And then I'm doing a show in, on October 17th. For those of you in New York City at the Gramercy Theater. I started off last year at the Gramercy, Gramercy Theater. It's a killer place. That's on October 17th. And then I'll be in Berlin, Germany. I'm going to butcher this. October 28th at the... Passions Kirche, um, Passion Church, uh, October 28th. Tickets are all available in the link in the description below. Um, oh, um, and my Beato bundle, I'm going to run the sale again through this weekend. 99 bucks for my Beato ear training, my Beato book uh, interactive, which is my video. So my ear training teaches you how to hear things and know what they are. My uh, my Beato book tells you the theory of it with vi it's all their video courses. Well, the the, the ear training course is an uh, is a uh, has all these modules, hundreds of modules to to train your ears to hear stuff. And then my beginner guitar course, Beato beginner guitar course, and my Quick Lessons Pro, which is more of like an intermediate to intermediate to advanced course. All of those for ninety nine bucks. That's why I fund the channel and do all the things that I do. Uh, you guys are awesome. So. Why is this video one of the biggest videos ever on my channel? Well, I think one of it is the storyline of, of imagining, reimagining a solo to Stairway to Heaven, impersonating another player. I had Eric Johnson impersonate himself when I reached out to him. I said, yeah, I want you to play over Eric. Um, Eric I want you to play over Stairway to Heaven. And, he, and I told him the premise of it. And he goes, like, like who? And I said, like you, like what you would have played over Stairway to Heaven. Oh, okay, okay. And then Phil did his uh, did an incredible Eddie Van Halen type solo, and the video came out the day before Eddie passed away, which is just unbelievable. Uh, but let me, for those of you that don't know the solo that I played on there, because I want to talk about the different scales, and I want to talk about how I channeled Peter Frampton. I want to talk about a particular Frampton solo that I took some ideas from when I was preparing to do the solo or thinking about it. Um, so here's the, the stairway solo that I did. I'll play it for you here.
Here's a funny thing. This isn't in the video where I put my guitar. <laughs> I just played it and I put my guitar down. I didn't, uh, I, I, uh, I thought that was pretty funny there. Actually, when I went looking for the solo, I found that. That was actually the take. Um, let me do that. Okay. So let me talk about the, the how I thought about doing this. So, so when I was, so there's a few things. So there's, there's, when Jimmy plays the, um, uh, the, I knew I had to pause there because, uh, with that background part, Jimmy plays around that. So that's one of the things that I thought I'd just leave the space for that. Um, but I thought, okay, what kind of things does Frampton play? So I went back and I and I listened to a particular solo, which is out of, it's the first solo on Do You Feel Like We Do after the first chorus. Now there's about 10 guitar solos in that, but let me play you that solo that I kind of got the idea from, okay? So this is Frampton solo, the first solo on Do You Feel Like We Do after the first chorus. Let me get to it. Hold on, I'll get to it. Okay, here we go. Right here. So I love that solo there. I think it's an amazing, amazing solo because it kind of encapsulates a, a lot of Peter's style that incorporates blues. It incorporates uh, blues licks. So he's in D minor pentatonic or D minor blues, right? And he actually uses it. He also uses that note, the ninth. So he starts out. That's all that. So I love that. So he is using this, these kind of, he's using a combination of blues scales and then the, the Dorian mode. Um, and, and Jimmy Page actually uses that. So, so in the, the beginning of the stairway solo, he goes, um, um, uh, when he hits that note F, he does it a couple times in the solo, uh, uh. Oh, he goes. Well, uh, so he's using that note F in there a few times because the chord progression is A minor, G, F. So it's a one minor to flat seven major to flat six major. One of the most common chord progressions. It's not easy actually to solo over a one minute. The Stairway to Heaven solo is one, basically one minute long on the dot, pretty much, really from the last phrase around. Um, so since Jimmy used that, that sound, and he uses, he also uses, he's using really, the same vocabulary that Peter Frampton uses, right? Uh, 
Um, so I thought, okay, well, what would Peter do then on that? Would he use Dorian? He'd use blues. Uh, and there are certain types of licks that he uses. So let me let me go back and just play like kind of the opening thing. So when I when I hit it, lead into this, I had to find something right off the top that that was um, that was very Frampton esque, right? <laughs> Okay, so that whole first phrase right there. Um, that's really pretty much one of the uh, basic lines that he plays there and that you feel like, like we do. I think that's how I played it. So really that whole first lick is is a blues scale with a ninth. Okay, so it's a hexatonic. It's really called a hexatonic scale right there. And this is kind of something that Eric Johnson does too, but let me let me play you that scale. This stuff, I talk about these hexatonic scales in my Beato book and, and how to play these things, but that's what, uh, what uh, Jimmy Page is playing. He uses that note. I use the note F later on in the, uh, in the solo. So, um, so I, but, but Frampton uses this ninth. Love that song. It's a beautiful, beautiful sound for soloing. Oh, just in the key of A minor there, just over these three chords. That hexatonic scale. So it's a, it's an A minor pentatonic with a ninth with a note B in it. It just adds so much uh, cool stuff to it, okay? And then if you throw in the blues note, the blue note. In with it, it sounds even cooler, right? So then as I go up the neck in the next phrase. Um, right here. Okay, so I, I go in like this. Let me move this out of the way here. Hold on. I, I lead into this next phrase. You always want to play, try to play complete phrases, right? Um, so I uh, never did. End of phrase, and then. Uh, that's the beginning of the next phrase. So that's what, what we call a leading line that leads you in to uh, uh, two, three. So I start before the downbeat and I play an idea that leads you into that next phrase. You always want to be speaking in sentences or improvising in sentences, right? Well, what am I playing there? I'm playing same scale, right? This, that. So right there, I'm still using that scale. Uh, that's actually kind of a Frampton thing, thing here. I love that. Then. So that, um, um, that particular, um, that's all that's from that scale right there. That 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 whole bit. And then da 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 da. Then I do this leading line. 
And right there, that's another pause. You always want to have those breaks in there. When I'm talking about these things, so it's like you want to play ideas that lead to other ideas or suggest other ideas. Okay, that's 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 a big thing about making your 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 soloing coherent is to play phrases that suggest other phrases and phrases that lead to conclusions. Okay, so I uh, this last phrase here. Let me let me play. Let me do this, and you'll notice where the natural break is here. <laughs> So right there, I paused and I go, um, uh, then I lead in again, because that's a downbeat, two, three. So right there, that lead in lick that I do, once again, I'm leading the listener into the next phrase. You always want to be thinking about two, three. Now, right there, this next part, I, I actually added in that note F, like Jimmy Page does. Right? He's using it right there. Jimmy Page uses both those notes. So, um, um, so I use, I'm using this part of this. I'm adding that note F. So I'm using two different hexatonic scales and then throwing in blue blues licks in there too. Uh, I continue on here like this. And there when I go, uh, I'm going like, uh, where I slide off, I'm sliding off. Right? You want to, even the uh, even when you come off a note, you want to do it on a beat or on a subdivision, right? You can't just slide off. You, it needs to be a purposeful. If you listen to B.B. King, any of the great blues players, they punctuate even the slides where they start and where they end and where phrases end. You want to have a little punctuation thing, right? Uh, so when you're figuring out solos, it's not just enough to get the notes and the timing. It's really get all the nuances of the phrases, right? And this is where ear training comes in to be able to figure out, okay, so what is what am I hearing there? Is this the third of the scale? Is it a blue scale? Is, is there an extra note in there? Like knowing what those little things are, hearing that little F natural in there. And my ear training course teaches you to hear these things. Is it a hexatonic scale I'm hearing? Is it a pentatonic scale? Is it a major scale? Is it a, you know, what interval is the note in relation to the root? When I hear an A minor chord and I hear, bah! I hear that note in my head, I know that that note is the ninth. If I hear an A minor, bah! I know that's ninth. Bah! I can hear those notes. I know what they are before I play them. I don't have perfect pitch. I'm using my relative pitch, and this is what you want to develop. So, so that thing. If I want to go. So I know, not only do I know what those notes are before that I play them, because of ear training. And this is why if you buy my ear training course, I don't mean to pitch it, you should just click on another uh, 
open up another tab and just go to rickbeato.com and you can get it there. But this is why you need to be able to hear these things before you execute them. You should know what they're going to sound like and then play them. I'll answer the the uh, super chats afterwards. Um, uh, so, so that's the thing really is that um, is to play them in your head, hear them, and execute them. So this is where theory and ear training come together in order to, to enable you to play the things that you hear. You hear an idea and it comes out of your fingers or your the piano, the trumpet, whatever you're playing, the saxophone, you hear it and you play it. And that's really the, the sign of a great musician is to be able to hear something first time, second time, third time, and know it. Know the song, what the changes are. Oh, it's one, minor one, flat seven major, flat six major, okay? Know what the progression is instantly. This happens to be a very easy, common progression here. Um, but um, that's the thing. And when you know when you're hearing the ninth, know when you're in a flat five. Just know those notes right like that. This is what this repetitive thing, when, when you go through these modules, my ear training course, it teaches you these things. And this is the stuff, when I'm listening to this, I'm doing the same thing, right? So so continuing on here. Okay, so. Um, okay, so right there is one of the licks, I, I played a lick that's really, a lick that I would play. It's not a Frampton lick. It's not a Jimmy Page lick, but it's almost the lick that Page plays. Because, um, bah, bah. Well, the thing that, that, to me, these kind of ideas, it's kind of unusual. Because using an extended, Using extended extended pentatonic position. All these positions are in my Beato book. Also, the uh, the interactive course shows you how to connect all these positions. No matter what you're playing, I just be able to connect them anywhere. Put in that major six. That's really knowing your neck and being able to do these things is is um, that's where you get fluid in playing ideas where you can just take these things and just play them anywhere on the neck, right? So so to continue on here. Okay, so um, right there, I'm, I play, um, um, this is kind of, this is actually a lick that wouldn't, Frampton would not play and Jimmy Page wouldn't play. This is kind of one of my own things I play. So I'm going, so I'm using this, this triad here. You're like, what, what triad is it? It's a G major triad. Then I resolve, I resolve back to that, uh, to the root there. Using these triads. Um, That's a G major, G had nine. I love that, I love that. Um, and then the last thing, um, here.
So that particular lick is literally a Frampton, uh, that's lift lift of a Frampton lick. He does that in this solo. He does it in a lot of solos. It's a great, I love that. Um, so once again, I'm using this scale here. That hexatonic scale. So it's A, B, C, D, E, G. So that's really, those are the elements that I use in the solo to, to, um, to make it sound like Peter Frampton and also to um, um, and also to have the the to to play to play phrases. That's a that's a thing that Peter does. That's a thing that that Jimmy Page does. There's all the breaks in the solos, and they're natural breaks to breathe. Right, the thing um, when he plays. Um, um, pause. Oh. Pause. Uh. Played a little wrong. There's all this beautiful um, uh, phrases that he plays. Um in their the all natural phrasing and that's really the key to to playing something to, to to that i gleaned when i listened to jimmy page jimmy page is very hard to mimic um he just is there's something about his playing it's so unique uh i love it so much amazing um okay a couple of questions here ghost of gentleman have you ever connected uh, Hendrix Watchtower, uh, along the Watchtower, opening solo, stairway solo, same chords, similar key, similar way, BPM. Solos are kind of similar, too. They are kind of similar. I, I, I do know that, but I can't play any Jimi Hendrix songs on my channel. So, uh, otherwise, I would have made that video a long time ago. Um, please play a solo for my new song I'm working on. Okay. Well, I'm probably not going to do that. Uh, Kiss Greatest Fan, thank you so much. Kiss Greatest Fan. So uh, so I have the, um, so I've got these four shows coming up. I'll just tell them to you again. Sodra Theater in Sweden, Stockholm, July 22nd. Atlanta show, September 28th. Uh, my first and maybe last show in Atlanta. New York City show, October 17th at the Gramercy Theater, which is a great place. And then in Berlin, first time ever being in Berlin. Can't wait. October 28th at the Passion Church, Passion Kirche, and I'm terrible at pronouncing that. Um, Matt says, Rick, I'm an intermediate guitarist and drummer. How can your bundle help me become a better musician? Matt, my, my bundle is going to help you become a better musician because uh, you're going to learn your ear training skills so that you can hear any song and play it immediately. You can hear any solo and play it. Um, you're also going to learn the theory with my... Uh, Theory Interactive course, my video course. I'm going to teach you about key centers. I'm going to teach you about diatonic chord progressions. Teach you about secondary dominance, about borrow chords, about chords that, for songwriters using third related tertiary harmony uh, and borrowed chords. And uh, so you're going to learn all this thing about modes and scales and it's going to teach you the stuff all over the neck. And then my if you're a beginner, you can learn how to play guitar from... I teach you how to hold a pick and hold the guitar right there, how to tune it and on into learning songs. And then my, then my, my uh, quick lessons course, if you've ever seen any of my quick lessons on here on YouTube shorts or Instagram, it's, it's, I've took, a, um, I have about 28 different quick lessons that I, um, that I did breakdowns of. So, um, so that's it. That's it. Enjoy your great weekend here. I hope the weather is beautiful like it is here in Atlanta. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Thanks for listening in. Check out my uh, remaking of the, the Back in Black solo as well. See you guys. Take care. We'll talk soon.